Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day. To start things off, this video is going to be a little different because I will be talking specifically about Ethereum's future proof of stake protocol known as Casper. Exactly what Casper is, how it works, and how to become a validator on the network. I found this article online, it is extremely helpful, so I will go over it with you guys. Specifications of Casper FFG have been posted to the GitHub coding repository. The finalized source code, part of version 0.1, promises greater coordination and project tracking for continued Casper development. Chief FFG developer Danny Ryan noted how version 0.1 will assist developers and researchers with more clearly tagging releases to help clients while also helping external auditors more easily track the contract and changes. It should be known that the Casper FFG, the friendly finality gadget, is an overlay process that lives on top of the existing proof of chain, proof of work chain, to give blocks additional security. It does not replace proof of work, it only verifies it. Finality in this case is defined as an operation that, once completed, cannot be reverted. Casper FFG is an important stepping stone on the road to fully switching Ethereum to proof of stake. It basically recruits nodes into becoming validators on the network. While this does not replace miners, it does in some way transfer an amount of power and ability to earn Ethereum into the hands of validators. A validator, says Buterin, is someone who has a pile of Ethereum and deposits it into a smart contract and who runs a node that basically signs coins with the same key that controls that Ethereum in order to participate in Ethereum's consensus algorithm and keeps the network running. This is going to get very interesting very fast, especially as I get into exactly what it takes to be a validator um, and exactly how uh, big of a pile of Ethereum you actually need in order to start validating. There is disincentive for bad behavior too. Node that attempt to hedge their bets and stake Ether in conflicting votes will be flagged by the system. That user will be logged out, bumped off the network, and could lose between 1% to 100% of their stake. Keep that in mind. So that means you have a uh, you are incentivized to not destroy and or mess with the network because the network will know. You will be kicked off, and I'm sure not a lot of people want to lose 100% of the Ethereum that they have put into the network. Number one is to choose your validation code. Buterin is trying to help the keep the Casper code very simple and clear. One of the goals that I'm trying to accomplish with the design proposals for Casper and sharding is to make it so that Ethereum protocol has no inherent built-in security assumptions other than information theory and hash algorithms. This means the public key private key system used elsewhere is an inelegant adjunct for verifying identity in Casper where the goal is to strip things down to the bare minimum. Instead, the developer proposes that instead of specifying your public key, you literally specify a piece of code that will be used to verify any signature that you sign. That functional piece of code is designed to prevent stake equivocation by bad actor. It cannot be used to stake two different votes to safeguard a user's position. In this way, that pure function code prevents Byzantine faults and ensures that the stakeholder is acting in good faith. Here we go. Number two, your withdrawal, you have to choose your withdrawal address, obviously. Your withdrawal address is where you want your staked Ether to go when you're done validating. Generally, a cold wallet will be a good place for this. You're not actually withdrawing yet. You're just telling EVM where you want your stake sent when you're done verifying. Number three is to make your deposit. Your deposit transaction, so this is a lot of, uh, we waited a long time to hear exactly how many Ethereum you would need, and now we have proper clarification. Your deposit transaction, Vitalik clarified, will be included in the Ethereum blockchain. This process in which the minimum, the minimum of 1,500 Ether can be staked minimum, takes about 45 minutes as the staked Ethereum induces the EVM to verify your transactions. After those 45 minutes, your identity as code has been written into the platform itself and you are now staking at this point, you will need to. So before we continue on, for those who do not know, uh, this is the current price. If you're watching this video in the future, it's probably a lot different from this current price right now. This is around $1 million worth of Ethereum. 
the craziest part is if you had gotten into Ethereum just about a year and some change ago, uh, when Ethereum was $8, you could have probably gotten to this relatively easily. It's not, you know, a small amount of money. Uh, but we thought for a while that it wouldn't be 1500 So this is part of why I believe when this does take place, there's going to be a large amount of Ethereum that will not be in circulation anymore, which I'll also get to in a couple of seconds. And it's going to mathematically raise the price of Ethereum because if one, if you take 1500 Ethereum out of circulation and more people continue to do this and put their money into mining pools, there's going to be a very small amount of Ethereum that is being pushed back into the network simply because the money that will be created from doing the validations, the money that you get, the money that is dripping into your wallet, people will not be pushing this back onto exchanges. They're probably going to be pushing it back into the network to create more coins, to get more coins in the future. Part four is just to simply stay online. The friendly finality gadget, the FFG consensus is split up into a series of time periods called epochs. An epoch consists of 50 blocks generated to the Ethereum blockchain, taking approximately 20 minutes to do so. Every epoch, you as a validator can send one transaction, a cryptographically signed vote of Ether, which will allow you your node to vote for a block at the start of a new epoch. Keep your node online, keep your node running, Buterin says, and you will continue to contribute to the security of the Ethereum network. Membership in Casper FFG has its rewards. Those who stay in the pool and validate are rewarded with Ether proportional to the amount already staked in the system at a rate between 0 to 5% each year. This is the carrot that has been previously, uh, previously only been held out to miners. The chance to win Ether for one's labors on behalf of the network. This is going to incentivize a lot of people. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the rate of 0% is how many people will be receiving 0%. I'm not sure if it's uh if you are in a mining pool and have a, let's say everyone else is contributing 500 and you are contributing one Ethereum. I'm not sure if this is kind of where it kind of gets you to 0%, but making 5% for free per year is going to incentivize a lot of people to lock away their coins in the network. Out of concern for network security, the FFG incorporates a mechanism that slashes or evicts from the system any node that attempts to submit votes inappropriately. These conditions are in place to ensure no one can mess around with the record of the blockchain, giving themselves an unfair advantage or erasing transactions. No shady agents can negate their stakes expenditure by double voting or by rewriting the chain to suit themselves. So here is where I think it gets extremely interesting. Number five, if part five of the entire validator process, if you want to be done with it, you simply have to log out. But there's a bit more than that. Should you decide to end your involvement with the network, you'd need to log out. Simple. Once you've initiated log out via your client, it takes about a week for the Ethereum blockchain to write you completely out of the blocks. This is about 700 dynasties of validated blocks. Once logged off, you have to wait the span of four months discussed above in order to reclaim your staked Ether. Four months. That way, your Ether remains unsettled until it's determined whether you'll have any deducted as a result of being slashed in concert in concert with other parties. After four months, you get your ether back into your hot little virtual hands. Not my words, this person's kind of funny. Uh, so a couple of things. Not only will this cause a huge amount of ether to be locked away into the system, if you wish to reclaim your ether, it is going to take you four months to get it back. There was something else similar to this. I can't remember the other name of the coin that had a proof of stake uh, thing like this. But when you wanted to withdraw your money from the system, I think, believe it took 13 months or something like that. So this isn't even as crazy as uh, discussed before. This is going, I don't think people, the four months sounds bad. I know it's a, it's a large amount of time. But this makes it so that everyone can't simply take their money out of the network should prices start going down. Because one of the major things that Vitalik has discussed before, he says one of the things when you have your money on the network, you are validating the network. Should the price go down and everyone becomes fearful? What happens in our market? What have we seen many thousands of times before? 
everyone starts taking their money out of the market and completely panics. This is not possible if you put your money into Casper. And it's going to be, I think, this this could probably cause Ethereum to become not a stable coin. I don't ever see it, you know, only increasing by 1% per year, you know, the, in the price. This will make it so that people can't simply dump their Ethereum because logically... There will be a lot of people who want to not only validate, but also make money off of this, who are more than willing to put their money into Ethereum. There are a lot of people who have, uh, we know in the news and stuff like that, who have 15, 20, 30,000 Ethereum. And when they lock up their coins and they can't take them out and they're still validating blocks on the network, this is all going to get very interesting very, very quick. We're still on version 0.1 for Casper, but I'm glad that we have come this quick. Like I said, if you're watching this in the future, this all makes no sense to you because this has all already passed. But reading through this before I uh, made the video, I was like, okay, this is, uh, he's intelligent for having the four month period. I know it seems like it's going to be crazy, but there will be a lot of people who will gladly do this in order to uh, be validators on the network and to make money from all of this. So I did not write this article, as you can probably tell. This was written by someone named Lucinda Michelle Knapp. I do not know her. I am not friends with her. Uh, but I do thank her for writing this because there was a lot of confusion about exactly what was going to happen with Casper and uh, pretty much the future of the Ethereum community and of the staking and or mining process because a lot of people were pretty confused for a very long time. We had no proper clarification on exactly what would be happening with Ethereum. Lo and behold, now we do. And I am hoping that by the end of this year, at least that we finally have Casper running on the network because it is going to be very interesting for people who are holding the Ethereum token. All right, everyone, that is definitely 100% going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a great day wherever you are, wherever you might be. Tell me in the comment section below what you think will happen with Ethereum. There are a lot of people who are uh, kind of mixed on their opinions of not only Ethereum, but exactly what will happen to it once they activate proof of stake, I believe, because I look at numbers and stuff like that. Mathematically, if you are locking away a large number of coins, once proof of stake is activated on the network, I believe the price will go up. I know a lot of people don't exactly care for Ethereum, so tell me in the comment section below what you think the future of Ethereum is. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will talk to you all soon. See you.